that in your previous class eight as well as nine the name of the chapter is pair of linear equations in two variables you are very familiar with linear equations in one variable which you had learnt in a standard and linear equations in two variables which you had learnt in nine standard but this year we are going to take two such linear equations in two variables in this academic year so please go for writing the name of the chapter then i'll commence it right please do follow the regular pattern to write the name of the chapter in your notebook the margin has been given like this and here leaving just three lines you have to draw the line and divide this into three parts you scale and pencil and draw like this then here first part here chapter number chapter number here name of the chapter the chapter number is three name of the chapter is it is pair of linear equations in two variables pair of linear equations in two variables and here you should write the date in the third column 3 seven 2021 scale and pencil and draw like this Ansa, have you returned? So, honey, okay. Ansa, you you as Rajput, have you returned? Okay. Ranvit, have you returned? प्रशांत सर यू मे अनम्यूट सम स्टूडेंट Yes, sir. Sir, hand me your idea. The chapter is pair of linear equations in two variables. Please go through the name of the chapter. In that, we are very familiar with all the words, most of the words. We are variable. We know that it is a mathematical term which is used for representing the unknown quantity and two variables. you know in general we represent the variables as a b c d and so on up to z any english alphabet letters can be taken but these letters should be in small only small letters and but most commonly used variables in algebra are x y z from a to z any letter can be used but most commonly used variables or letters for representing the variables are x y and z here i have written three variables one is x second one is y third one is z now we have two variables x and y okay two variables then you are also very familiar with the equations could anybody define the term equation what do you call a mathematical statement in which 
two or more algebraic terms are to be taken and they are connected by using the symbols of fundamental operations. What do you call such statement? If two or more algebraic terms are connected by using the symbols of fundamental operations, this is called equations. An algebraic expression. Algebraic expression. If I look okay, here, I may take 2x squared plus 3. This is an algebraic expression. Is an, here, you can come to know that 2x squared is an algebraic term. Even 3 is also an algebraic term. These two are connected by using the plus sign. Even we may take the terms like this. 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4. Here I have taken three terms. And these three algebraic terms are connected by using the symbols minus and plus. Next, if I write 2x squared by 7, observe. Here also we have two algebraic terms. One is 2x squared and another one is 7. They are connected by using the symbol division, like this. If two or more algebraic terms are connected by using the symbols of fundamental operations, then it is called an algebraic. algebraic. Now, here I go for taking an algebraic, one more algebraic expression. It is x squared plus 5x. Let me go for one more. It is x plus 7. These are the two algebraic expression. Let us go for equalizing them. For equalizing, I'll go for using equal sign. See that now, these are the two algebraic expressions which are equalized. This is known as an equation. Hence, equation can be defined as the equality of two algebraic expression. The equality of two algebraic expressions is known as an equation. In every equation, there will be a symbol called equal sign. And it has, in every equation, we can also observe two parts. One is left-hand side part and another one is right-hand side part. NHS and RHS, both will be there. This is one example. Let me go for taking another one. It is x plus 2x, 2x square minus 5 is equal to 0. It's also an equation. Then if I write just x equal to 5 is an equation. 2x plus 3y equal to 10 is also an equation. Then x cubed minus 3x square plus 4 is equal to 0 is an equation. See, here I have written four equations. Once I repeat the definition of equation, listen carefully. It is the equality of two algebraic expressions. Dear students, you are also familiar with the highest power of the variable involved in the polynomial or equation, what it is called? The highest power of the Degree of the polynomial. Degree of the polynomial. Degree of the polynomial. Degree of the equation. Observe it. Here in the first equation, could you tell what is the highest power of the variable? Two, sir. Two. Two. Therefore, its degree is. Two. In second equation. Two, sir. Two. Yes, degree two. is two. Third equation. One, sir. Degree one, sir. One. One, sir. One. One, sir. 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 Three. Three. Three, sir. Three, sir. One, sir. Repeat. The highest power of the variable involved in the in the equation is called degree of the equation. So based on the degree, we will go for classifying equations into some types. Okay, I'm going to take an equation of degree one. So such equations are called linear equations. An equation of degree one 
is called linear equation. Should not go for writing anything, just observe. Linear equation, an equation of degree 2, that is called quadratic, quadratic, equation. quadratic equation. Quadratic equation. Like in polynomials, we are also we are classifying an equation of degree 3. This is Cubic called equation. Cubic, cubic equation. Cubic equation. Cubic equation. An equation of degree 4. It is called by quadratic equation. By quadratic equation. And is also called quadratic equation. An equation of degree 5. It is called quintic equation. Degree 6 is called hexagonal equation. So these are like this. We will go for classifying the equations based on their degree. Yes, students, you are also familiar with the general form of these. The general form of linear polynomial. Linear polynomial. X plus B. X plus B. Plus B, X plus B. B is equal to zero. X plus B. But as it is equation, just we write equal to zero. Ax plus b equal to zero is the standard form of or general form of linear equation where a is not equal to zero. If it is quadratic equation, we write its general form as ax square plus bx plus b is equal to zero where a is not equal to zero. Cubic equation. It is ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus, plus b is equal to zero where a is not equal to zero. And the general form of biquadratic equation, it is a, a to, the power power to the power 4 plus bx cube bx square bx plus bx plus b equal to zero. Equal to where a is not equal to zero. Look here. In this chapter, we are going to focus on linear equation. That is an equation of degree one. An equation of degree one is called linear, linear equation. equation. Here I'll take some examples for linear equations. Okay, x plus 2 equal to 10. 2x plus y is equal to 30. m plus n is equal to 180. x plus y plus z is equal to 30. Observe it. Here I have written four linear equations. You can notice that in these linear equations, some number of variables are there. In the first linear equation, how many variables? One. There is only one variable. It is one variable. So, hence we call it as a linear equation in one variable. In the second equation, we have two variables. With two two variables. variables. We call linear equation in two variables. variables. And third one, here two, variables. two variables. Two variables. With the degree one. Two variables. An equation of degree one with the two variables two is variables. called linear, linear equation in two variables. And fourth one is it is linear a linear equation. Two variables. In three variables. So now we are going to focus on pair of linear equations in two variables. Okay. Linear equations in two variables. We have two linear equations. If you want to take, if, if you take these two linear equations together, then it is called a pair. But here, we will go for following a condition that if you take two linear equations in two variables, the variables involved in both the equations should be same. Like, See that 2x plus y is equal to 30, and I'll write 7x minus 4y equal to 20. These are the 
two linear equations in two variables. Here is one variable x, second variable y. Here also one variable is x, second variable is y. If you go for taking them together simultaneously, then it is called pair of linear equations in two variables. To show whether we have taken these two linear equations in two variables together, we will go for using the flower bracket. If I use the flower bracket like this, it is understood that these two equations are taken together. Clear up? Followed? Yes, sir. Look here. Here, an equation of degree one is called linear equation. An equation degree one with two variables is called linear equation in two variables. If two linear equations in two variables are taken together, then it is called pair of linear equations in two variables. Have you understood the definition? Yes, sir, or no? For those, yes, understood. What are shape? Ashita IB. Understood? Okay. Trace? Trace HC. Good. If two linear equations in two variables are taken together, then it is called pair of linear equations in two variables. Dear students, you are also familiar with the general form of a linear equation in two variables. Linear equation in two variables, which you have learned in your previous class, as it is ax plus by plus c is equal to zero. Where a is not equal to zero and b is not equal to zero. C may be zero or may not be zero. And here, a, b, and c are, are called the coefficients. And these coefficients may be any real numbers. Maybe the natural, whole numbers, integers, rationals, irrationals. They are real numbers. It is the general form of a linear equation in two variables. But here we are taking two linear equations in two variables. So as two linear equations are to be taken, I'll write it again. ax plus by plus c is equal to zero. If you write the general form like this, there will be no difference at all between the two linear equations. Is it not? So that is why what I'll do is here, I'll take the coefficients as it is a1 and it is a2. Coefficient of y is b1 in first equation, b2 in second equation, and constant c1 in first equation, c2 in second equation. And these two are to be taken together. And this is to be read as a1x plus b1y plus c1 equal to 0 and a2x plus b2y plus c2 equal to 0. This is the general form of pair of linear equations in two variables. And here, the coefficients a1, a2, b1, b2, c1, c2, they are all real numbers. And the condition is there. a1 should not be equal to 0. a2 should not be equal to 0. If a1 becomes 0, it will be a linear equation, one variable. I mean, there are two variables there. That is why a1, a2, b1, and b2 should not be equal to 0. b2 is not equal to 0. c1 and c2 may be 0 or may not be equal to 0. So it is just an introduction regarding the chapter pair of linear equations in two variables. Have you understood? Yes, sir. Any doubt? Any doubt regarding this? No. If you do not have doubt, no, then sir. I'll go for giving you the writing part. Let's go for writing. And before that, one more information. That is, in this case, Pratham JR. As Pratham JR. Pratham ji, are you are concentrating here or uh, playing with another mobile? 
Pratham GR. If you repeat it again, I will remove the meeting. Oh, yes. Here, two linear equations in two variables are taken simultaneously. They are taken together. Hence, it is also known as simultaneous linear equations. Simultaneous linear equations. Follow? Yes. Now, please go for IT. The introductory part. Right. Introduction. Introduction. In that first term is it is variable. Variable. I have already given you the definition in the second chapter. Anyhow, once we shall go for recalling. Variable, it is a mathematical term which is used for representing the unknown quantity. Right. A mathematical term. A mathematical term. Mathematical term which represents which represents the unknown quantity which represents the unknown quantity is called is called a variable. A mathematical term which represents the unknown quantity is called a variable. Let's go for taking the examples. Examples are it is A, B, C, and so on. X, Y, and Z. Among these, the most commonly used variables are X, Y, and Z. Next. Second term, it is equation. It is equation, right? Third term is equation. Equation is, is the equality of two algebraic expressions. The equality of Two algebraic expressions is called an equation. Right. The equality of the equality of two algebraic expressions. Two algebraic expressions is called an equation. The equality of two algebraic expressions is called an equation. You may give some examples for equations. Here I'll write. First one, it is x plus 2 is equal to 0. Second one, it is x squared plus 5x plus 6 equal to 0. Third one, it is x cube minus 2x is equal to 8. Just uh, here I have been using only one variable. Now, I'll take the two variables equations as well. It is x square plus y square equal to 100. And I'm not compulsory to use only x and y. We may use other letters as well. Hence, I write like this. It is 2p minus 3y. 2, sorry. 2p minus 3q is equal to 8. Next, let me write one more. Sixth one. It is a minus 2b plus c is equal to 25. So these are few examples for equations. Even the coefficients may be any real number. 
I'll give you one, one more such equation also. Seventh one, it is root two x square minus it is eight is equal to zero. This is all equation. Sir. Your last example is also exactly. Sir, in LHS also we can put variables, sir. Yeah, of course. In every equation, there must be two parts, LHS and RHS. You will, you will interchange these LHS and RHS also. Then also they are called equations. Then we are, you know that the highest power of the variable Involved in the equation, it is degree of the equation, highest power of the variable. So please write that answer. Right. Third one, degree of an equation. Degree of an equation. Degree of an equation. Right. The highest power of the variable the highest power of highest power of the variable variable involved involved in the equation the highest power of the variable involved in the equation is called is called its degree or degree of an equation the highest power of the variable involved in the equation is called degree of the equation. Written up. Manisha, sir, have you written? Sir, sir. Okay. Nitish Kumar, Sohail. Okay. Now let me go for taking an exam, just only an example. Here. I write the most familiar equation to us, it is x squared plus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. Here, the highest power is 2, therefore its degree is 2. Right, highest, highest power is 2 and the degree is, degree is 2. Next, we all know that the equations are to be classified based on their degree. So now we will come to know the types of equations. Right, fourth one, it is types of equations. Types of equations. In bracket, you may write based on degree, based on degree, right, one by one. We know that an equation of degree one, it is called linear equation. An equation of degree one is called linear equation. In bracket, you just write degree one. Second one, or just below that, give one more information. It's general form. General form is it is ax plus b is equal to zero. If you write only ax plus b, it will be a linear polynomial. Please do remember, as it is equation, you must show both LHS and RHS part. ax plus b equal to zero, where a is not equal to zero. Second one. An equation of degree two, which is quadratic equation, right? Quadratic equation. Don't write the definition. Just whatever I've been writing, copy the same. Quadratic equation. In bracket, you write degree two. Degree two. And its general form. General form is it is ax square plus bx plus c is equal to zero. 
where a is not equal to zero. Now, third one, an equation of degree three. This is cubic equation. Cubic equation. So let me go for writing that here. Right. It is third one. Cubic equation. Cubic equation. In bracket, you write degree. Three. Sir, fifth one, sir. Hmm? Fifth one, sir. Not fifth one. Fifth one. In types of equations, first one. Oh, Union, oh, okay. Second one. Ah, sir. This is first one. This is second one. This is third. So that's why I have been using different colors. This general form is it is a x cube plus b x square plus c x plus d is equal to zero, where a is not equal to zero. Example, for what? It is by quadratic equation. By quadratic equation, also known as quadratic equation. Its degree is four. Degree four. And its general form can be written as it is a x raised to the power 4 plus b x cube plus c x square plus d x plus e is equal to 0. When a is not equal to 0. Return. So these are the different types of equations, but we are going to focus on an equation of degree one that is called linear equation, right? So now we are going to focus on linear equations. So fifth one is types of linear equations. Here on the right, fifth one. Types of linear equations. Types of linear equations. These types are based on the number of variables involved. So in bracket you write based on number of variables in bracket while based on number of variables. So in that first one, it is a linear equation in one variable. Right. Linear equation in one variable. Definition, just let me tell you, listen carefully. It is an equation of degree one with one variable. It's such a simple one. An equation of degree one with one variable is called a linear equation in one variable. So, and its general form can be written as this is just ax plus b is equal to zero, where a is not equal to zero. Only one variable. The variable involved here is x. Next. If you go for taking a linear equation, that is a, an equation with one variable, sorry, an equation with degree one and with two variables, it is called linear, linear equation, equation two variables. Linear equation. Linear equation. In two variables, an 
equation of degree one with two variables is called linear equation in two variables, and its general form can be written as it is a x plus b y plus c is equal to zero where a is not equal to zero. Similarly, we can go for taking three variables, four variables, and so on. But just we shall focus only on the equation in two variables. Sir, the name of the chapter is zero, no? linear equations in two variables. So now, so this much is introductory part. We are moving to the definition of the state. So, so that is the name of our chapter. Sir. Yes. The b is not equal to zero, no, sir. Ah, uh, yes. B is not equal to zero. If you go for taking a linear equation in three variables, it will be a x plus b y plus c z plus b is equal to zero. Where a is not equal to zero, b is not equal to zero, and c is not equal to zero. This is just general information. Now you write the side heading. It is pair of linear equations in two variables. So don't copy as sixth one. Introductory part is completed. We are moving to the actual concept. Pair of linear equations. Linear equations in two variables. Pair of linear equations in two variables. Let me write the definition of it. It is. Is a very simple one. If two linear equations in two variables are taken together or simultaneously, then it is called a pair of linear equations in two variables. Right. If, if two linear equations, if two linear equations, so this in bracket you may write degree one. If two linear equations in two variables, two variables are taken together, are taken. Together, they are to be taken at a time. Together, then it is called. Then, then the pair is called. It is called a pair of linear equation in two variables. I'll write it in short form as yes, and E. Both are same only. Simultaneous linear equations are pair of linear equations in two variables. Written up. Just let me give you an example for this. It is right. X plus Y is equal to 10. Then X minus Y is equal to 2. And these two equations are to be taken together. We can put flower bracket. Next. Let us write the general form. General form or standard form of simultaneous linear equations. Standard form. I've already given you this one. Just to recall and write. Ishas are you following? Okay, good. Then Tejaswini Yamji. Okay. Is that Ananya P? Is it okay? Very good. Suman. Right. Swati. Ritika. Very good. Sumuk. Very good. Okay, okay. Shukumar. Shukumar KP. Okay. Huh. So let's write the general form of linear equations in two ways. 
pair of linear equations in two variables. It is a one x plus b one y plus c one is equal to zero. Then a two x plus b two y plus c two is equal to zero. And these two equations are to be taken together. Where? Right? We all know that a one and a two are not equal to zero. A one is not equal to zero. A two is not equal to zero. Next, B one is not equal to zero, and B two is not equal to zero. Here, next, x and y. What are these? X and variables. y are variables. Variables are right. Are variables. X and y are variables. Then what do you say about a one? A one, A two, B one, B two, C one, and C two. These are called Einstein. the coefficients. Coefficients. And coefficients are real numbers, right? Are coefficients. Coefficients in bracket you write real numbers. Okay, are you done? This condition is what, and we have taken two variables x and y, and remaining are coefficients. <laughs> Here, then what do you call a one x, a one x, b one y, c one, a two x, b two y, c two? These yes. are called terms of the equation. Terms of the equation. A one x, b one y, c one, a two x, b two y, and c two. These are called terms of the equations. Please do remember. <clears throat> okay. Now we are moving to the next important part of this chapter. Dear students, you are very familiar with graph of linear equation. In two variables, right? Could you tell what is the nature of graph of linear equation in two variables? Straight line. 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 Straight It is infinite. Infinite, as you have learned in your previous class. If it is a linear equation in one variable, it has only one solution. If it is two variables, it has infinitely many solutions. Are you following or not? Yes, sir. Are you following? Give one example. Suppose two x plus three equal to seven. It is a linear equation in one variable. You can solve it. On solving, x is two x is equal to seven minus three. It is four. X is equal to two. Two. You will never get any work. Therefore, we say that it has only one solution. If you go for taking x plus y equal to ten, which is a linear equation in two variables, then number of solutions. Sanjana, Sanjana, only for me. Let your concentration be here. Two variables are there. If you want to find out the values, you have to substitute, or you have to take values for any one of these two variables. If I take x as zero, then if x equal to zero, then right? zero plus y equal to ten, then y equal to ten. If I take x is equal to one, then y is equal to ten minus one. It will be nine. If I take x is equal to two, then y is equal to ten minus two. It will be eight. Like that, you will get plenty of 
solutions uncountable number of solutions hence we said that a linear equation in two variables have a linear equation in two variables have infinitely many solutions infinitely many solutions but what about pair of linear equations in two variables yes yes look here the graph of linear equation in two variable it will be a straight line if i take two such linear equations how many lines we get two lines sir two lines two lines are you two following lines. what i have been telling yes sir now if i take one linear equation in two variables one linear equation in in two variables you will get one line only if i take two linear equations in two variables then i'll get two lines and these lines the two lines yeah if i take x and y x and x dash this is y and y dash the two lines may be intersect each other and they intersect all both and what this is one possibility second possibility is the line may be the lines may be parallel to each other and the third case it is coincident the lines may coincide one another see this is an equation of this is the graph of one equation and the graph of another equation they lie on the same line so these are the three different possibilities followed <clears throat> to get to these possibilities we have different conditions so as we have come to know that <clears throat> pair of linear equations in two variables they their graph may be parallel to each other intersect each other or coincide with each other even the solutions will also be different they will be having different types of solution to obtain these solutions we have different methods are you following yes sir so before going to those methods let me give you the information regarding these right now we are discussing about solutions of pair of linear equations in two variables right side types of solutions types of solutions of pair of linear equations in two variables Nothing but simultaneous linear equations. Listen. As I said, the nature of graph of linear equation in two variables is it is a straight line. If I take two such linear equations in two variables, you will get. two lines and these two lines may intersect each other now intersect are the how many how many points of intersections are available one one only one, sir. Sir. Only one. one. that means in one case we can come to know that a pair of linear equations in two variables have unique one. solution unique solution this is the first type first one is unique solution you can write with me unique solution okay in that in case of unique solution the graph of the linear equations will intersect each other 
have to remember. You have to draw them. Take care of pencil and draw the lines. The first one is A1X plus B1Y plus C1 equal to 0. A1X plus B1Y plus C1 equal to 0. And second one is A2X plus B2Y plus C2 equal to 0. Both will intersect each other. Then we can say that it has unique solution. That is one particular solution. Such as have you got it? And we have a condition for this also. Listen, you will, the graph will intersect each other at one point when the given equations satisfy the condition that A1 by A2 is not equal to B1 by B2. So, you will take the ratio of coefficients of x, that is a1 by a2, find out what way, then b1 by b2, then we can say that it has unique solution. And when you draw the graph, you can observe that both will intersect each other. Ora. See, here in case of unique solution, the number of points of intersection is only one. Therefore, we say that it has unique solution. Such it, such it, you need to concentrate here. Are you writing? Huh? I don't think so. Observe. Second one, here I'm drawing the lines, that is the graph of two linear equations in two variables. This is the graph of one linear equation and another one. Assume that it lies on the same line. Now, could you tell at how many points both the lines will intersect. Infinite. Infinite. You know, here was two, three, four, five, six, seven. So many infinite number of points at which the lines intersect. Therefore, under this condition, you can say that the given pair of linear equations in two variables have infinitely many solutions. This is the second one, right? Infinitely, infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. And the graph of pair of linear equations will be like this. That is, they coincide with each other for infinitely many solutions. Or up. And the equations will satisfy a particular condition for this. Now we are going to say when a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 is equal to c1 by c2. If all the three ratios are equal, then you can say that lines will coincide with each other or you can also say that the given equations have infinitely many such. Over. Now, third one, just observe it. Here, I'm drawing the graph of two linear equations in two variables. The first one is the graph of a1x plus b1y plus c1 is equal to zero. Second one, it is a2x plus b2 
B2Y plus C2 is equal to zero. Dear students, could you tell at how many points these two lines intersect each other? No point, no, sir. No point. No point. point. No no point. point. They are parallel. They, do, oh, they do not intersect each other at any point. Do they have any solution? No, 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 sir. no, sir. no, sir. no sir. solution. When the lines intersect each other, then only we can say that they have the solution. If it has intersected, if they have intersected at one point, it has unique solution. Infinitely, sorry, yeah, at many points, we say that it has infinitely many solutions. Here, the lines do not intersect each other. Then what do you say about the solution? No solution. solution. It has no solution. So this is third. No solution. This is third type. No solution. And for this also, we have a condition. That condition is, so let me write that here. Hope that you have copied this. Have you drawn these two lines which are parallel to each other? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Then write the condition. Condition is A1 by A2 is equal to B1 by B2, but not equal to C1 by C2. If this condition looks good, then you can say that the given equations have no solution. Follow? Can you start? I'm going to rub this. So we have come across three types of solutions. Three types of solutions with respect to pair of linear equations in two variables. The first one is unique solution. Don't copy, just observe. Unique solution. Second one is infinitely many solutions. And third one is no solution. And for unique solution, the condition is it is A1 by A2 is not equal to B1 by B2. Infinitely many solution, A1 by A2 is equal to B1 by B2 is equal to C1 by C2. And for no solution, we write A1 by A2 is equal to B1 by B2, but not equal to C1 by C2. Your students, could you tell among these in which we can obtain the solution of pair of linear equations in two variables? Unique solution. Unique solution. Unique solution. Can I answer? First one, second one, third one. Or first one, first second, second and third, third and first. First and second, sir. First and second. First and second. Solution. Allah. If the given pair of linear equations in two variables will satisfy the first condition, we will get a solution called unique solution. And second condition, if it satisfies second condition, then you can say that it has infinitely many solutions. But you have to look at solutions in there. But in third case, no solution at all. If the given pair of linear equations have the solution, may be unique or infinite. So such equations are called, are called consistent equations. Followed. Equation. If they have the solution, then the equations are consistent. If the pair of equa linear equations in two variable does not have any solution, then you can say that the equations are inconsistent. Followed? Have you followed? Any doubts? No, so sir. Many, no, sir. 
ನಾನು ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಎಸ್ ಆರ್ ನೋ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಕೇಳಿದಾಗ ಸೇ ಎಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಂಡಿಕೇಟ್ಸ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಶೋ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ನೋ ದಟ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಗೋ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ ಅದರ್ ವೇ ಇಕ್ರ ನಾಸ್ರೀನ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಯು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ಓಕೆ ಶಶಾಂಕ್ಯ ಮಾಚಾರ್ ರಿತು ರಿತು ಓಕೆ ಮಾನ್ಯ ಡಿ ಆರ್ ಶಮಂತ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಯು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ವರ್ಷ ಎಚ್ ಆರ್ ದೀಪಶ್ರೀ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಓಕೆ ಇಫ್ ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ದ ಇಕ್ವೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದೆನ್ ದ ಇಕ್ವೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಇಫ್ ನೋ ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ದೆನ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸೇ ದಟ್ ಇಕ್ವೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ಕನ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಐ ಗಿವ್ ಯು ಒನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಟೂ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ವೈ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಟೆನ್ ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ಅನ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಫೋರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ವೈ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ವಿಜಯಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿ ಲೆಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಕಾನ್ಸಂಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ಬಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಐ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ a pair of linear equation in two variables now you tell that whether they are consistent or inconsistent inconsistent sir inconsistent adu you directly decide madbeku andre you have to find out the ratio of a1 by a1 by a2 then b1 by b2 and c1 by c2 you know a1 by a2 2 by 4 2 by 4 andre 1 by 2 1 by 2 then 3 by 600 1 by 2 1 by 2 10 by 15 is 2 by 3 so these two are equal and not equal to 2 by 3 a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 but not equal to c1 by c2 therefore you can say the equations are inconsistent equations are inconsistent similarly i take one more it is x plus 3y is equal to 100. 7x minus 4y equal to 50. Tell that whether they are consistent or inconsistent. Inconsistent. Consistent, sir. Consistent. Consistent. How simple it is. Here, it is 1 by 7. A1 by A2. is 1 by 7 then b1 by b2 3 by minus 4 means minus 3 by 4 then c1 by c2 100 by 15 it is 1 by 2 here 1 by 7 is not equal to minus 3 by 4 it is to itra sakta a1 by a2 is not equal to b1 by b2 unique that's unique solution therefore you can say that the equations are consistent ಅರ್ಥ ಆಯ್ತಲ್ಲ ಎನಿ ಡೌಟ್ ಇಫ್ ದ ಗಿವನ್ ಇಕ್ವೇಶನ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ನೋ ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಸೊ ರೈಟ್ ಔಟ್ consistent and inconsistent equations side ali consistent consistent and inconsistent inconsistent equations consistent equations you may write the definition for both first one is that if if the given pair of given pair of pair of equations the given pair of equations has solution solution is 
comma then then it is called then it is called or then the equations is called consistent equations then the p is called consistent consistent you can write the conditions for both a1 by a2 is not equal to b1 by b the unique solution second one a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 is equal to c1 by c it is infinite solution infinite solution any one of these two conditions hold then you can say that the given equations are consistent otherwise it is inconsistent hope you have copied next one right if the given pair of given pair of equations if the given pair of equations has no solution then it is called then it is called inconsistent inconsistent and below that you write condition for it is a1 by a2 is not equal to, sorry is equal to b1 by b2 which is not equal to c1 by c2 this is condition for no solution Now let's go on to what examples which are given in the textbook only. Right. What examples? Examples. In that first. Have you written up here? Anu, sir. Anu, M A. Govardhan. Have you written? Govardhan. Vinay Ram. Yes. Okay. Right. First one. On comparing. On comparing. the ratios on comparing the ratios a1 by a2 to comma b1 by b2 and c1 by c2 find out find out whether the lines representing whether the lines representing representing the following pair of equations the following pairs of following pairs of linear equations linear equations 
intersect at a point. Intersect at a point. Is the word? Abra like the word intersect. Are parallel? Whether they are parallel or coincident? Coincident. They'll give you a pair of equations. You have to tell whether the graph of those two pairs of uh, pairs of equations intersect each other, parallel to each other, or coincide with each other. So we know the conditions for all of these, right? Do you know or not? Do you remember? Yes, sir. Prem Kumar. Prem P. Kaleshwar, Trupti, Ditesh. And any equation for them. First, I get absorbed. Even if you have equation in the if it satisfies A1 by A2 is not equal to B1 by B. What do you say? Whether the graph of the equations intersect, parallel, or coincide with each other. Intersect, sir. Intersect. Intersect each other. Suppose A1 by A2 is equal to B1 by B2, no? not equal to C1 by C2. Parallel, sir. Parallel, sir. Parallel to each other. Parallel to Then B1 by A2 is equal to B1 by B2 is equal to C1 by C2. Coincident. 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 Clear up? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I'll give you the equation. First equation is like this. It is first pair of equations. 5x minus 4y plus 8 equal to 0. 7x, let me make the total of 5 by 7 at the total. 7x plus 6y, 2 by 3 again. Minus by 3. 3. Intersecting at one point. Very good, very good. Minus 9 is equal to 0. These two equations are taken together. Observe it. Please look at the board. Very simple. You can leave one, one mark. You don't need to go for calculation directly with two. Mind calculation, you can go for telling the answer direct. Observe, it is. First, you have to check that whether the given equations are in standard form or not. There are two equations in the standard form. Then, what is A1 by A2? Five by seven. 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 Just observe. And B1 by B2. 2 by 3. 2 by 3. 2 by 3. 3. 2 by 3. Minus 4 by 6. Minus 2 by 3. Are they equal? Yes, sir. No. They are not equal. If they do not, sorry, if they are not equal, you can say that they have unique solution. Unique solution. If they have unique solution, the graph of the equations will intersect each other. Each other. One point. One point. Vedavyas, Prem Pikaleshwar. Okay. <clears throat> Let us, uh, let's move on to actual steps. Right. You know, once you go through the question, I'm comparing the ratios, these ratios. A1 by A2, B1 by B2, C1 by C. Then we have to decide. So let us find out all of these. Let me write the given equation. Our put you know the standard formula there. If not, you have to write in standard form. Remember, I'll write this as it is 5x plus 4y plus 8 is equal to 0. 7x plus 6y minus 9 equal to 5x minus sir. 5x minus 4y, sir. 5x minus 4 
let us find out the ratio. The first ratio is A1 by A2. Here, A1 is 5, A2 is 7. This will be 5 by 7. Next, please write with me. B1 by B2, it is minus 4 by plus 6. Minus 4 by 6. You're going to now simplify one. Cancel it by 2. 2, 2s are 4. Then 2, 3 is a 6. It will be minus 2 by 3. Then C1 by C2. C1 is 8. C2 is minus 9. Right. 8 by minus 9 is nothing but minus 8 by 9. Now you have to compare all the three ratios. On comparing, on comparing, what do you say? A1 by A2 is not equal to B1 by A2. A1 by A2 value 5 by 7. B1 by B2 value minus 2 by 3. B1 by B2. They are not equal. Therefore, the lines representing these equations, do they intersect parallel or coincident? Intersection. They intersect each other. Right. Therefore, the lines, the lines intersect each other. Yeah, no, I love my man. You know, get there. Intersect each other. Is that for not gentle? Next, second one. Second, right. It is nine x is equal to minus three y plus two. This is the first equation, and the second equation is eighteen x plus 6y is equal to minus 24. the equations? Infinite. Infinite. Are they in standard form? Yes. No, sir. no, sir. So we have to write in standard okay. form. In order. Yes, solutions. As the deciding factor is very simple, just my calculation is enough. In the room, compare one. Nine x plus three y is equal to twelve. Nine by eighty, it is one, one by two. Take minus three y to the left hand side. It becomes plus three y. Three by six. One by two. One by, by two. two. Next, twelve to the left hand side. Minus twelve. Minus twelve by minus twenty four. One by two. One by. Two. Then all are equal. If all are equal. Correctly, many solutions. Sir. If all are equal, it has infinite solutions. Equations have infinitely many solutions. If they have infinitely many solutions, what do you say about their graph? Coincidentally. 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 Do you understand? Yes, very good. Now let's move on to actual calculation. So for calculation. Without fail, you have to write the given equations in standard form. If it is asked for two marks, you have to follow these steps. One mark again, you directly answer for it. Right. It is 9x plus 3y minus 12 is equal to 0. Sir, uh, C1 by C2 will be minus 1 by 2, sir. One, yes, sir, it will uh, intersect, sir. Wait, wait. Intersect, Agar, no? Equation of name. 9x is equal to minus 3y minus 1. Now it is correct. Next, it is 18x plus 6y. This is... Plus 24. 
Representing these equations coincide with each other. Therefore, the lines, the lines coincide with each other. Next, I go for taking one more. This is third one. Third one is six x minus three y is equal to minus two x minus y plus nine equal to zero. Inconsistent, sir. Huh? They are parallel. They are. Pan. Very good. Very good. Right. It's very simple. Me direct again decide one. You know, six by two and three. Six by two and three. Three bar. Minus three by minus one. It is three bar. Got it. Then here minus ten by. Sorry, minus ten. Take that to the left hand side. It becomes plus ten. Ten by nine. Ten by nine. You can five observe that three is equal to three, but not equal to ten by nine. A one by A two is equal to B one by B two, but not equal to C one by C two. Means they have no solution. No parallel. No solution, Andre. The lines will be parallel to each other. Right. First, write the given equations in standard form. It is six x minus three y plus ten is equal to zero. Second equation: two x minus y plus nine. Equal to zero. This is a one by a two. Find out this ratio. Six by two, which is equal to three. Then b one by b two. This is minus three by minus one. It is also three. Let me continue that. C1 by C2, C1 by C2 is 10 by 9, right? 10 by 9. So you cannot be simplified. You may keep that as it is. We got all the three ratios: A1 by A2, B1 by B2, and C1 by C2. I'm comparing. What do you say? What do you 
the ratio a1 by a2 b1 by b2 c1 by c2 c1 by c2 put comma find out find out whether whether the following pair of linear equations are whether the following pairs of linear equations whether the following pairs of linear equations are, are consistent consistent or inconsistent inconsistent the students i have already told you regarding consistency and inconsistency if the given equations have solution then they are consistent equations if no solution it is inconsistent so i'll go for taking some example with respect to that first right it is 3x plus 2y is equal to 5 3y wait 2x minus 3y minus 7 consistent zero consistent sir consistent sir consistent sir 3 by 2 and 2 by minus 3 are they equal no yeah. oh, they are not equal if they are not equal what type of solutions they have no solution no solution unique solution is that andre lines will intersect at one point therefore you can say that the equations are consistent clear is it not simple yes sir yes right first write the equations in standard form 3x plus 2y five transfer that to the left hand side it becomes minus is equal to 0 next second equation it is already in standard form write this as b now we have to find out all the three ratios all the three ratios the ratios are first one is a1 by a2 a1 this is 3 by 2 next b1 by b2 it is 2 by minus 3 or minus 2 by 3. Next, c1 by c2. This is minus 5 by minus 7. It is equal to just 5 by 7. Clear? 
you were right. On comparing, on comparing, where a one by a two is three by two, b one by b two is two by minus three, they are not equal. Am I right? A one by a two is not equal to b one by b. If this condition holds good, you can say they have unique solution for this condition. Therefore, they have these equations have equations have unique solution. So solution onto either as they have solution, you can write. Hence, hence the equations are consistent. Hence the equations equations are consistent. Equations are consistent. Is it not simple? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have been yes, sir. observing your faces also. You have to say uh, yes, sir, or else no, sir. So, honey, no expression at all. Hmm? Prasthana HS. I want response. Yes, sir. It is easy. No, sir. It's very difficult. Amrita is melody. Got it. Okay. Spandana. Right. Kirtana. Kirtana I am. Understood. Very good. Girl. Sudarshan. I want, I expect active participation from your side. Sudarshan. Uh, beginning your graph was like this. It was going all of a sudden. Now it has not come down, but it is stagnant. It should not be there. It should always be going up. Arsha, yes. Have you understood the concept? Now I'll go for taking next one. Second one. Even twenty more exam na thoda kotti dare. This one. Just put double star mark and write. It is three by two x plus five by three y is equal to somewhere next nine x minus ten y equal to forty. You are trying to test Inconsistent, sir. Inconsistent. Consistent or inconsistent? Inconsistent. 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 Inconsistent, sir. Yeah. 3 by 2 into x plus 5 by 3 into y. This is equal to 7. And take 7 to the left hand side, it becomes minus 7. Is equal to 0. Next, 9x minus 10y. Then transfer 14 to the left hand side. It becomes minus 14. That's equal to 0. No, sir. It is consistent, sir. Unique consistent, solution. Consistent, sir. Unique solution. 1 by 6 is not two. equal to 1. A1 by A2. This is 3 by 2 by 9. 3 by 2. You know that how to divide a fraction by fraction. Yes, this can be done as 3 by 2. Take the reciprocal of 3 by 9. The time is there. It's reciprocal is 1 by 1. 1's up, 3's up. So numerator 1, denominator 2, 3's up, 6. Next, B1 by B2. B1 by B2. Where B1 is 5 by 2. B2 is minus 10. It is equal to this is 5 by 3. Take the reciprocal of the denominator. Minus 10 is 1 by, by 10. 1 by minus 10. This is equal. You may cancel it. 1, 1 by 6. 6. It is 1 by minus, minus 6. 6. Or minus 1 by 6. They are not equal. It is consistent. 
Anup Kumar, have you understood? Okay. Anshal, Mohamad Rakhin, Rakhi Bhai, understood? Ah, yes. Vinay? Right. Neha Anjikimant, understood? <clears throat> Listen. Listen. Shukumar. So now it is time up and it is a time for concluding the class. Before that, just one information. Tomorrow you'll be having the weekly test, right? The weekly test is on the chapter chemical reactions and equations. From balancing a chemical equation, from there, full lesson. Got it? From balancing the chemical equation. Sir, okay. Sir. Will be there. Math. And mathematics, whatever I have covered up to this problem. So both will be there. So math. timing, timing probably it is from 6 to Sir, 7 to 7 to 25. Math. Um, because we have covered good amount of syllabus. Obviously, it, it should be given for 25 only. Okay. <laughs> Once, once I have been reminding you, the syllabus is chemical reactions and equation, equations chapter. It is from balancing a chemical equation from there, full lesson. That is up to effects of oxidation. Ali Tankari. Next, mathematics, pair of linear equations in two variables up to consistency and inconsistency. Vera? Okay, so with this, let us stop the class. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Prashant, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you.